Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. We begin this morning with the Republican governor of the state of South Dakota, Kristi Noem. Her upcoming memoir, No Going Back, is out this Tuesday and she joins us from Watertown, South Dakota. Welcome back to Face the Nation. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you for inviting me to be on with you today. Well, Governor, uh, I have your book right here. The very first blurb in it is an endorsement from Donald Trump. He says, this book, it's a winner, lays out a fantastic plan to make America great again. I know you're back from a gathering with Mr. Trump and other Republicans in Florida. Did he mention any of the response to your book at all? Oh, he certainly knows about the book, and I appreciate his endorsement of it. You know, this is really a book that talks about how we're not going back. It's we're no going back to the days before Donald Trump. The, Donald Trump broke politics, and I think that's a good thing. We're not going back to the days of Mitt Romney or the Bushes, that now there's a new uh, way to do and talk to the American people, and they appreciate it. It's an honest, genuine conversation about what these citizens can do to take back their government and to have more input. So this book is really a how-to guide for, for how to make your voice heard and have for people in this country what they can do to really make sure that they are getting genuine elected officials that really want to give them more freedom and liberty. So you write about lessons learned in leadership um, and you bring up some specific incidents I want to ask you about. You talk about meeting some world leaders and one specific one, quote, I remember when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, I'm sure he underestimated me having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this, this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. So I'm glad that this book is being released in a couple of days and that those edits will be in place and that people will, will have the updated version. So you did not meet with Kim Jong-un. That's what you're saying. You know, I've met with many, many world leaders, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. I think I've talked extensively in this book about my time serving in Congress, my time as governor, before governor, some of the travels that I've had. Um, I'm not going to talk about my specific meetings with world leaders. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, this anecdote shouldn't have been in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I made sure that that was adjusted. So well, uh, the book is not released until Tuesday. And so yeah. we're doing all that we can to make sure that those changes are made. And I'm going to continue to focus on what this book is and the blueprint that it lays out for the American citizen on all of the the things in the background and, and stories of my life, but also uh, what I think that needs to be identified in politics and what's broken today. I talk about how broken the money yeah. game is, how broken it is that, that we've got consultants that are getting rich off of elected officials, and then how fake some elected politicians are. Sure. Every single person in this country wants someone in elected office that's, that's um, a human being, that doesn't say they're perfect, uh, I take responsibility for that being in the book. And as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I asked for it to be changed. So I'm glad that the release date is in a couple of days and we're excited to talk to America about uh, my new book, No Going Back. So uh, you talk about your time in the Armed Services Committee from 2013 to 2015. In that period of time, the leader of South Korea was a female president. I'm wondering who is it that you confused Kim Jong-un with? Oh, I think you need to remember, Margaret, and everybody needs to remember that I've worked on ag policy and federal policy for over 30 years. Uh, my time in serving and making policies in this country has been extensive and covered decades. Right, but so you never went to North Korea. I make North no Korea. specifics in this book. I talk about the fact that, yes, I have. You I've went, been there. So you went you to North to, Korea? Uh, you went to the DMZ. And there are details. There are details in this book that talk about going to the DMZ and specifics that I'm willing to share. There's some specifics I'm not willing to share with you. I've traveled the world and I visited with world leaders. And some of that is referenced in the book. And this anecdote is something that when it was brought to my attention, yeah. uh, we made some changes. And when the book's released, we'll do all that we can to see that that, that is reflected. Okay. Well, I'm asking about that specifically because you you made the point to bring him up twice 
and that he was a, a little tyrant. Do you have a question it's, for me, Margaret? Yes, I do. Um, South Korea is a treaty ally. North Korea is a nuclear armed adversary. So that's a pretty Hello. big thing to confuse. Um, I know you read I'm this sorry. book I'm... before it was published because you released video of your recording of the audio book. You didn't catch these errors when you were recording it? Oh, Margaret, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, I took action to make sure that it was reflected. And listen, this is what is so discouraging about politics in the media today, is that we have the White House that just recently came out and confirmed that President Joe Biden has misspoken, has made mistakes, has even outright lied over close to 150 times just this year. And you've done nothing uh, to question him on any of that. And you're you're talking about a book that hasn't been released yet, that's been corrected before it's been released. And you haven't said one thing about Joe Biden saying that he was in prison with Nelson Mandela, that he started the civil rights movement. That if he I had an interview an with Joe Biden, who I've asked for multiple cannibals, times, so. I will definitely ask him about his record. But I'm yeah, asking I'm you about asking, your book here, which we have. I'm just asking for why, so, why am I being treated differently than every other person that you've interviewed? I've looked at your last I'm several weeks in you. your interviews. You don't. You don't interrupt other people. You let them talk. Thank you for inviting me to have this conversation about this book. This book is extremely uh, important to the people of this country. It is important because it's a how-to guide of what they can do to have input into their government, how we need breakers and builders in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm taking responsibility for the change that we've made. Uh, okay, and, the, and, and the for the mistake in the me. book. And I've told you that, and I'm, uh, well, no, it's not. I, what I've said is that I have You're decided- You're not taking responsibility for the mistakes anecdote in the book. Should, I've decided this and I, I'm saying that this book is uh, very, very good, and I've met with many world leaders, and that um, I, there are world leaders that I've met with that are in this book. There are many that I've met with that are not in this book. Okay. Uh, and this is an anecdote uh, that, that I asked to have re removed because I think it's appropriate at this point in time. But I'm not gonna talk to you about those personal meetings that I've had with world leaders. Okay. I'm just not gonna have that conversation because I think it's important. Okay. You do mention uh, Benjamin Netanyahu as well, though, in it among world leaders. Um, in an interview with Time magazine this week, former President Donald Trump was asked about Israel and Hamas. And he said, quote, Bibi Netanyahu rightfully has been criticized for what took place on October 7th. Do you agree with Mr. Trump? I think that Bibi Netanyahu is a strong leader who's leading Israel through extremely difficult times. Uh, October 7th was horrific, and the crimes that Hamas committed against the Jewish people were absolutely awful, and that the United States of America should stand strong with our allies in the Middle East. Uh, I'm proud to, to know the Jewish people and their leaders over many, many years, and I think that what Hamas is doing and the atrocities that were committed are horrific, and that we should never stand for the anti-Semitism that we see going on in the United States of America. And what happens on our college campuses is absolutely devastating. It should be shut down immediately. I'm mm -hmm. disappointed that President Joe Biden didn't take action immediately to stop these violent crimes against the Jewish people that have happened on our own college campuses right here in the United States of America. Uh, it should have never been allowed, and it should be stopped today. Okay, so you don't agree with Mr. Trump's statement there. Um, I want to ask you uh, again about the book. Uh, I, I, I know you know this question is coming um, because there's been such an enormous backlash about your revelation that you shot and killed a wire hair pointer named Cricket who was 14 months old. You say in the book she uh, came from another family that struggled with her aggression. You'd been training her to hunt. She got too excited, ruined the hunt, and then attacked and killed some chickens. I wonder if you have regrets about sharing this story. You know, Margaret, this book is filled with vulnerable, painful moments in my life, uh, filled with times where I've made very difficult decisions. The reason that the story is in the book because people need to understand who I am and some of those difficult decisions. This was a dangerous animal that was killing livestock and attacking people. And, and I had little children at the time. Our operation had many kids running around and people in interaction with the public. Uh, and I made a difficult choice. I think you're a mother too, and you have little kiddos. Uh, would you make a choice between your children or a dangerous animal? And I think I would ask everybody in the country to put themselves in that situation because yeah. that's what I faced. And I talk about it because what I'm tired of in this country is politicians who pretend to be something that they're not. 
uh, that they aren't willing to have the hard conversations and look at the past and the tough decisions that they've made. I'm, what I talk about in the book extensively when people are able to get it on Tuesday is to see the whole story and the truth, not the spin that the media has put on this story. Uh, the media has put some or removed removed most of the facts and and what the reason this is in there is because yeah. I want people to know that I don't ask anybody else to take on my responsibilities. But I understood my responsibility and as a mom I made a choice between protecting my children and protecting them from a dangerous animal that was killing livestock and attacking yeah. people and, well, and that's I, the decision I, I that I made. I, I described I think accurately how you wrote it up in the book. Um, you didn't say the dog attacked people. You said it had tried to bite you. Um, and I just wonder why you concluded that a young dog was untrainable and not just take it to a shelter. This dog was a, well, this dog was a working dog and it had come from a family that already had issues with this dog. And I had put months and months of training into this dog. This dog had gone to other trainers as well. Uh, so, so all of that is the facts of the story and all of that shows that when you put someone in a position where they have to make a, a decision and they want to protect their family and protect children and other people from getting yeah. attacked from an animal that has attacked others and killed livestock, uh, that's the choice I made over 20 years ago um, yeah. and that I didn't ask somebody else to take, take that responsibility for me, that I had to make that decision myself. Because you put it in a part of a chapter called Bad Day to Be a Goat. And then after you shot the dog, you, quote, realized another unpleasant job needed to be done. Walking back up to the yard, I spotted our billy goat. You said he smelled and would chase kids, so you took him to the gravel pit and shot him twice. How, how do you justify that? How was the goat a threat? And I'm asking you this because it seems like you're celebrating the killing of the animals. Not at all. This has been a story that my political opponents have tried to use against me for years. It's well known in South Dakota and it has been to other people. And I want the truth to be out there and to understand uh, that, that these animals were attacking my children, that, that we live on a farm and a ranch and that tough decisions are made many times. And it is, it is to protect people. And I'll tell you, the, the extremism of other people and how they have uh, attacked me politically, I understand it. They're doing the same thing to me that they do to Donald Trump every day, yeah. every day, the constant attacks and coming after me. I, during COVID, I was attacked night after night for months after months for the decisions that I made. In fact, you and many other journalists attacked me every single day on TV for months for the decisions that I made in South Dakota uh, for my people to protect their freedoms I and think their we had a very, so, I think we had a so very I, fair I'm used interview to being attacked when you joined us. I, Ma'am, well, at that pretty, time, and I thanked I was, you yeah, for was, answering questions on it. Um, but uh, on the on, mm -hmm. on this point, though, because you have been rumored to be a potential vice presidential candidate, as you know, um, and former House Speaker Newt Gingrich said, killing the dog and then writing about it ended any possibility of her being picked as VP. Y you talk multiple times about it. In fact, at the end of the book, you say the very first thing you would do if you got to the White House that was different from Joe Biden is you'd make sure Joe Biden's dog was nowhere on the grounds. Commander, say hello to Cricket. It, are you doing this to try to, to look tough? Do you still think that you have a shot at being a VP? Well, number one, Joe Biden's dog has attacked 24 Secret Service people. So how many people is enough people to be attacked and dangerously hurt before you make a decision on a dog and well, what to do with it. Well, he's not living and at the White that's, House that's anymore. That's the question that the president should be held accountable to. You're saying um, he should be that's shot? That's what the president should be accountable to is what, is what is the number? And I would say about Republicans criticizing me, these are the same Republicans that criticized me during COVID. They've criticized me when I've made other decisions in South Dakota to protect my state. And my state today is extremely happy and thriving. We're doing well. We've got thousands of people yep. moving to our state because they love the opportunities that are here and the businesses that have come and how we've gotten to be a state okay. that has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the nation. Everybody has an opportunity for higher wages. We've got revenues and reserves. We've paid off our debt. We've got a AAA credit rating. We've got a fully yeah. funded pension system. We were the first state in the nation to So you're not to going really to retract go the book and to prevent China. Governor, I, this book is a powerful book. It's an honest book. It's an honest book about blueprint for America of what citizens can do here to take their country back. Okay. And I'm so proud of this book and, and what it will bring to people. I hope that they will buy it. They'll find a lot of truthful stories. And we talk a lot about 
um, well, and what we can use as an example from Donald Trump on how he has continued to be a real person, been genuine and been honest to people. And that would. But if you have to retract it politicians or is when they're parts fake. of it, I'm not I'm not retracting anything. Okay. I'm not retracting anything. All right. No. All right. Governor, Absolutely. This book. Thank you for taking the questions and joining us today.